Hello, thanks for joining us today. The video that you're about to watch is to be used for instructional purposes only. If you need more detailed information, please consult your owner's manual or you can contact the Wanner Engineering Customer Service Department. I hope you find this video helpful and it gets you back up and running in a timely fashion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Neil Taylor. I work at Wanner Engineering, and I'm here today to tell you how to replace the diaphragms in your MT8 metering pump. So the tools that you would need to accomplish this are going to be a 17 millimeter socket wrench, a medium sized Phillips head screwdriver, and some sort of a, a small screwdriver or Allen wrench. And I'll show you why, we, why we're gonna need that in just a little while. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to remove these eight large bolts on the front of the man manifold. In the interest of time, I've removed all eight of the bolts from the front of the manifold. And now this is free to be removed from the pump. When you remove the manifold, it comes out in one piece, as you can see. There's no need to take off the top or the bottom portion of the manifold to get at the diaphragms. That can all stay together. Now this exposes the diaphragms, as you can see. We have three diaphragms that are exposed. You remove the diaphragm plate simply by pulling it out and it exposes the diaphragms and the spool valve assembly on the back side of the diaphragms. This is all you will need to do in order to replace these diaphragms. So I've removed the manifold from the pump. I've also removed the diaphragm plate from the pump, exposing the diaphragms, the spool valves, and the O-rings on the back side. So, once you have this removed, the pieces that you are going to need to replace every time you do this, and they will come in your kit, are these um, backup rings that you see right here. Now these are, are not reusable. We, we suggest that you don't reuse them, but in a pinch, they can be reused, but you will get new ones in your repair kit. Please remove these three backup rings in white and replace them with the ones that have come in your kit. Also, you will be getting new O-rings on the back side of the diaphragm plate. Please remove those old O-rings and use the new O-rings. For speed's sake, I'm showing you that, but I'm just going to put these back on here to show you that the, where the O-rings go. Now to remove the diaphragm, that's where your small screwdriver or Allen wrench comes into play. You'll notice on your diaphragm spool valve assembly, there's a small hole in between the, in the plunger. Push your screwdriver through that so it comes all the way through. Take out your Phillips screwdriver and these are just snug and you unscrew them. You remove the screw all of the way. Remove the small screwdriver from the spring and that all pops out just as one assembly. Set that off to the side and looking at your diaphragm now pop that out right from the back side. There's your diaphragm assembly. How to remove that from the stem is it's just finger tight. It just unscrews just with, with ease. And there is your diaphragm, the O-ring on the back side of the diaphragm, and your diaphragm stem. So it's important to know when you're changing your diaphragms 
that, of course, this is your diaphragm, but you're going to have two O-rings. There is a PTFE encapsulated O-ring, and there is also an elastomeric O-ring. Now, it's critical when you are replacing diaphragms in your pump that the O-rings go in the proper order. This being the front side of the diaphragm, the threaded end being the back side of the diaphragm. You want to take the encapsulated O-ring and put it on the front side of the diaphragm. The elastomeric O-ring goes on the back side of the diaphragm or the, the end of the diaphragm with the threaded post on it. That's critical. You, you have to remember to do that. Don't get them mixed up. Otherwise, the chemical that you're pumping may attack the elastomeric O-ring where it won't attack the encapsulated O-ring. You thread your post back onto the diaphragm and make sure that it's just finger tight, just so it's snug. It doesn't have to be over torqued. It doesn't have to be under torqued. Make it snug. Assemble the diaphragm through the diaphragm plate and make sure that it's nice and seated in there. You'll feel it. Run it around with your thumbs so everything is seated down inside of the diaphragm groove. Turn your assembly back around and the spool valve assembly that you took off can be replaced just as it was. Those parts you can use over again. You compress the spring, you get the thread started, grab your Phillips screwdriver and start to thread this back on. Now your small screwdriver or your Allen wrench is going to come into play again. You'll feel this tighten down, but in order to get it all the way tight, you get that hole again and put your screwdriver through it. That way you hold the whole assembly tight, hold it with your thumb, and just make sure that everything is nice and snug. There's no torque requirement on this. There's no Loctite required. It's just so everything is nice and snug. Now when you assemble this, it's critical to know that there will be small holes at the top of each one of the chambers or each one of the um, spool valve assemblies. You'll see a small hole in this plate. That hole must face up when you reassemble this. So take the plate and reassemble back into your pump just like it came out. Give it, a, give it a little wiggle and make sure that everything goes in and in it goes. That's all there is to it. Nice and easy. Now you see right here I still have one of my encapsulated O-rings. The other O-rings are still in the manifold. Now this can be assembled either way. If the O-rings stay in your manifold it can be assembled that way. However, what I recommend is that it's easier to just pop those O-rings out, replace them. Remember I said we're going to replace these O-rings that will come in your parts kit, but we're going for speed's sake we're going to just reuse these. So I'm putting them back onto the diaphragms and you see they stay, they're nice and good, they'll stay put. Take your assembly and reassemble it back onto your diaphragms. Now you will feel when this seats. It's very difficult to see it, um, but you can feel it seat. And this one just seated. You hold your manifold in place. You get your bolts started again. I go opposite just so the manifold is supported properly as you put these together. Get them finger tight, the ones on the outer reaches of the manifold, just like I'm showing you here. Now, the way you tighten the bolt is critical. What I recommend people to do is to put in the four middle bolts next. Now what you want to do is, I've run these three bolts in finger tight, 
I'm running the last bolt in finger tight. Do not torque these bolts right away. Get them in finger tight and then torque in an opposite corner pattern when you go to put these in. So what you'll do is you will start with this bolt and you will go and it will be quarter turn. Opposite corner, quarter turn. Opposite corner, quarter turn. Opposite corner, quarter turn. And you will do that pattern all the way around these four bolts until they are torqued to the spec in your manual. Come back, add the other bolts to the proper torque spec and you've just replaced your diaphragms and you'll be good to go for adding oil into your pump and repriming the hydraulic end. Thank you.